Waterfront Airport. We'll be back after these messages. Back at the Berg Lake Front Airport, Tail Fabi is the leader of the field here, due for a stop any time, but look at this. He's going to stay out yet another lap. They're getting some remarkable economy out of that car, and maybe he can pull just enough ahead so that he can make his stop and rejoin the fight still at the front of the field. Let's go to Jack. Well, Paul, they had radioed to Toyota to come in that time by, but remember the onboard telemetry tells the driver just approximately how much gas or fuel actually remains. Inasmuch as they are going to make what we're calling a gas and go with a stick, a time stop, better to use up as much fuel as possible and take on only the necessary fuel to go the distance. Right now, he'll end up having a net of four additional laps over Jill DeFerrin. That could be the difference between finishing second and possibly going to victory lane. Jack Belknap on the pit road for what will be his final stop of the day. Remember, though, too, it's 2.3 miles around this course. And if Teo Fabi had miscalculated, that could have been very expensive. So Belknap makes his stop and Teo got the word this time and he heads on to the pit road so tail fabi will make his final stop of the day as the leader of the race raul boisel has moved into second with the stops and we'll see if he assumes the lead now paul the stopwatch is poised as soon as the hose is connected the stopwatch will start the stick is poised as soon as they, they have figured out exactly how much fuel they need talk about the ballet, the coordination of these crews, and how they anticipate and plan. And by timing the stop that way, instead of putting a full load aboard, they save at least three, maybe four seconds, because the fuel flows in slower later in the game. I was thinking how valuable that three or four seconds is. It's just unbelievable. Bobby's group is running a really hot race. I'll tell you what, it looks like Tails gotten it done, in and out of the pits with that time stop. Boisel, who stayed out a little too long, appears to be rolling to a stop on the course. That's Danny Sullivan coming under tail, but tail's sitting there with a full load of fuel on the car and has to get it back up to speed. There is now second place, Jill DeFerrin. So great work by the crew. Keeps tail Bobby out in front and moved him up a position earlier in the day. This is the first time we've been watching DeFerrin in other than the lead, and it will be interesting to see if he has the speed now to close in on Fabi. Fabi looks like he was going slow down pit lane. I, I looked like he was going slow down pit lane. I thought he was going to go into the pits again. Keeping an eye on tail, Fabi. That's exactly what he did, Jackaroo. Well, this is definitely an unscheduled stop. Now, he had lit the tires up when he pulled out into the pits, and you could tell when he pulled onto pit road, there was something amiss in the engine compartment. Just a lot of disappointment on Teo Fabi because they have killed the motor now. Oftentimes, when you try to light the tires up and get on the throttle after a pit stop, you can create electronic problems that spell doom for the engine. Well, we thought when he was moving slowly there, at least I thought that it was just the heavy fuel load and he was being cautious. And then I got to thinking, well, he wasn't on fresh tires, so there wasn't any need to be. And almost immediately, he had it in. And that gives the lead over to Jill DeFerrin once again. So luck plays into the battle, but nobody ever refuses good luck. What a break for DeFerrin. And there is Raul Boisel. You can see the nose of that car has been in contact throughout this day. He was up to the Jerry. front of the field. Let's go to Gary. Yeah, Paul, uh, it was a case of an engine misfire. He was trying to limp his way to the pits. The crew had been greatly encouraged because they've been on a roll here in the last month with some solid top 10 finishes. He had worked his way to seventh. Then in the pit stop situation, he had actually moved up to fifth. But now, of course, sideline, it's all over. Let's go to Jack. Well, Gary, it wasn't an engine problem. It's a broken exhaust for Teo Fabi, and he is out of this race at Cleveland. All right, so Jill DeFerrin has the lead. Now we're no longer relying on uh, on the computer scoring here, but uh, Judy Stropis is keeping track of everything for us. With DeFerrin the leader, then Michael Andretti, Robbie Gordon, Brian Herta, and Jack Villeneuve. 68 laps are complete. On Tuesday, the television world lost a very dear friend, George Wenzel. 
founder and co-owner of the NEP companies, which supplies all the technical support for these great pictures that you see at home. He had a tragic accident and lost his life five days ago. All of us on the crew, as well as the entire industry, know how much George meant to this business and how much influence he had on its growth and development. His inspiration, his leadership, and love will never be equal and will never be forgotten. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his friends and family. We will truly miss him. This Ford Fact is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealers. Have you driven a Ford lately? Indy cars are so sensitive that accurate and repeatable chassis measurements are a must. By replacing the standard wheels and tires with setup wheels, which are manufactured from a solid piece of aluminum, bearings placed on the bottom, allows the car to settle in the same place each and every time on these pads, which are actual scales telling you how heavy that corner of the car is. The setup wheels also give you a flat plane to measure both the toe-in and toe-out angle, and also what's known as camber angle. You can take a pair of calipers on a piece of fishing line here and take a measurement on the front and then take a measurement on the rear. That will tell you toe-in to one-tenth of a millimeter. To measure the camber, you would take an inclinometer, place it on that same flat plane. That will give you a measurement down to one one-hundredth of a degree. That may sound like a very small measurement, but drivers say they can feel the difference. And it took six months to develop this system. The team says it was well worth the effort. Well, here at the Burke Lakefront Airport, under the full course yellow, this is something they've been doing regularly, bringing out this, what is really a jet airplane engine, towed behind a truck so that they can blow off some of those scraps of rubber that build up off the line and can cause accidents like Eric Bachelors. Let's go to the pits and Jack. Football second place runner Mar Michael Andretti has radioed into his team that he is experiencing a little bit of a loose condition, so this caution is a nice respite for him. But he also has intermittent radio problems. Sometimes he can't hear, sometimes he can. So they're working with that. But most importantly, what the team has done, they feel they have somewhat of a verbal agreement with Scott Pruitt, where at the drop of the green flag, Pruitt will drop out of the way so Andretti can go chasing the leader. Let's check in with Gary Gerald for some more news from Pit Road. And in the third place bit of Robbie Gordon, Derek Walker has been earnestly talking to his young driver, admonishing him or wanting him to have patience. He said, don't do anything until I tell you to, because they know that this is almost like a restart to this event. And remember that wild scramble going to turn number one, Michael Andretti, Robbie Gordon in second and third, two of the most aggressive young drivers getting ready for the green. Now also for Gordon, this is a great opportunity to cool his brakes that had been starting to fade under the full course yellow. And what their concerns about getting a, another splash of fuel, this yellow takes care of that. He's going up to 104, nearly full rich on the fuel indicator in the cockpit. He's going to go hammer down. This should be very exciting, Paul. Yeah, we got a great view of how the field will line up. Used car is for sale over here. Bosell, Bachelor. Nine cars are on the lead lap. 74 laps are complete. 16 to go with Jill DeFerrin out in front. should be coming back to a green flag just momentarily. In the meantime, Al Unser Jr. out of the run, Gary. The defending champion of the series uh, continues to have very, very tough luck. We know you had electronic problems, but that's not what put you out of the race. What was it? Well, we finally lost the transmission there leaving the pits that last time. And, uh, you know, it's just the same. The, the whole Marlboro Team Penske, all of my guys, I'm just so proud of them because we keep coming back week after week and all the problems that we keep having, and they keep coming back with their chins up and ready to go. And so, uh, you know, I'm awful thankful of that. And I just want to say hi to Al and Cody and Shannon at home, and uh, I miss you a lot. Thanks, Junior. We're back Whoa. green home.
here and now in the closing lap, 76 laps complete, 90 scheduled. That is a great shot, Lynn. What's going on here has some real championship implications because Michael Andretti, of course, is now in a position to win while two, uh, look at this. Well, now, look at Robbie Bryson on the inside again. They both circle around. Come on, get look at that for a series of lines. Flat one on her. He's right on your tail. Come on, let's get going. Get off the fire. Around there, he's simply right trying to get back on the lead lap. Dead ball, keep after them. Let's go, let's go. So Michael DeFerrin. And Robbie's reporting he's got a problem. Okay, bring it in. We'll do it. Which one? Okay, let's just do the left rear, just for the left rear. Look at him struggle with it. That's the left rear tire that's going sure down. Sure, it's flat. Set four, I got it. I can see it. Take it easy now. You know, he can only lean on that equipment so much, and eventually it, it will break. It. Well, you wonder how, how much contact occurred in there. Here it is. Not only that, he's running out in the debris out there. In other words, you can take that chance, you can go out there, you can really make a move, but at the same time, you're risking a lot, and you'll get a lot of that crap that sort of collects along the track and debris, and it can cut a tire. So Jack Haroot, now Robbie's back in. Well, Paul, they've taken the wounded tire off. It was just ripped to shreds on the left si left side. And Robbie Gordon is totally frustrated. You can hear the car missing. That's because he's got the floorboard, he's got the gas pedal down to the floorboard, and the button keeping him from over revving. That's frustration. And there's the tire. Cost Robbie Gordon what may have been another win. Let's take a look at the restart again. This is from Michael Andretti. his eyes. This is the best racing of the year right here. Fabulous. DeFerrin hanging it out. Michael coming on top. Lucky they didn't touch there. And it's where the width of this course pays off. Great stuff. I started to say there are tremendous championship implications for what's happening now that Michael Andretti is leading the race because he is now gaining ground rapidly on both Ray Hall, who's had trouble in this race, and Jock Vilnev, who is running now back in fourth. Big day for Michael Andretti if he can keep this thing together. And for the moment, it's a three-car battle. DeFerrin heard of Vilnev as Michael Andretti. Can he make it two in a row? He's trying to pull away. Scott Pruitt's in the fight, but he's two laps down. over the Burke Lakefront Airport is one of America's most enduring corporate symbols, the Goodyear Blimp. The Spirit of Akron is providing us with an aerial view of the Burke Lakefront Airport and the Cleveland IndyCar Grand Prix. Some great shots.